There's a healthy change happening here in Southern California. Healthcare Partners is now Optum, and as a national leader in healthcare, our doctors are working together to provide coordinated care that's focused on you and how you live life. Healthcare Partners is now Optum, healthcare made stronger. To learn more, visit optum.com slash California or click the ad. Optum and Optum Care are trademarks of Optum Incorporated. There are those who say, leave well enough alone. If it isn't broken, don't fix it. You don't mess with success. While others have something quite different to say. The Lexus RX. With dynamic handling and available 12.3-inch touchscreen, it's the best-selling luxury crossover of all time. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Click the banner to discover more. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. Barry Levine, the author of The Spider, was on The Dr. Oz Show, and he was talking about Jeffrey Epstein's alleged suicide attempt the first time and alleged suicide success the second time. And he had some pretty interesting things to say. Now... I've been very clear about the fact that Jeffrey Epstein should have never, ever, ever, ever been in a jail cell with Nicholas Tartaglioni. This is a straight-up cold-blooded killer, if the charges and the allegations can be believed. This is a man who allegedly murdered people over a drug deal gone wrong and then buries them on his, on, on his own property. So this guy's a cop murdering people over drug deals, and they think it's a good-ass idea to put Jeffrey Epstein in a cell with him. Now, when you go to jail, or you're going to prison and you're a cop, you have a target on you. Just like if you're a sex offender, you have a target on you. Now, could Tartaglioni have been trying to gain some cred by uh, attacking Jeffrey Epstein? What, would that be something that is out of character for a jail to, to for that to occur in a jail? No, this kind of this kind of thing happens quite a bit to sexual predators in jail. And Tartaglioni, knowing that he could, you know, maybe get some stripes here, well, why would I think that Jeffrey Epstein would try to strangle himself in a jail cell with another man present? Does that make sense? Or does it make more sense that a man who is accused of murdering multiple people over a drug deal gone wrong could have been the one that assaulted Epstein. Now, we don't know because there's no camera footage. It wasn't preserved. So we don't know, and all we can do is speculate. But I know dudes like Tartaglioni, and this isn't the kind of guy that's going to sit in the jail cell with Jeffrey Epstein, and they're going to be slamming bones. They're not going to be trading recipes. These dudes aren't talking about the finances of Wall Street. Tartaglioni isn't playing that kind of game with somebody like Jeffrey Epstein. And it, it boggles my mind why Jeffrey Epstein was ever in the cell with Tartaglioni at all. Well, in this article tonight by uh, OK Magazine, like I said, Barry Levine is going to talk a little bit about the different versions of what Jeffrey Epstein said took place in the cell that night. Headline? Jeffrey Epstein told inmates different versions of his suicide attempt. This article was um, published on November 10th of 2020, and there doesn't seem to be an author, so I'm guessing OK Magazine staff produced it. Disgraced financier, pedophile, and sex offender Jeffrey Epstein committed suicide in August 2019, allegedly. Epstein was found unresponsive in his cell at the Metropolitan Correctional Center where he was awaiting trial. The New York City medical examiner ruled Epstein's death suicide by hanging. Yet there was no pictures that preserved the crime scene. There was no investigation. The body was moved. The cameras didn't work. And we have Baden, who has a whole different explanation about what went on. So... Anyone who's running around and talking about they know for sure one way or the other what happened here is lying. 
And there's a lot of that lately. A bunch of fakers who have uh, thought that they it's a good idea to come up with their wild ass weird nonsense and inject it into this case. It's just some of it is so absurd that that it's not even funny. But anyone who runs around and tells you for sure one way or the other they know what happened in that cell is lying to you. You know who knows what happened in that cell? Nicholas Tartaglioni, folks. That's it. That's the only person that we know of. Epstein had attempted suicide earlier that year, allegedly, but was unsuccessful. Now, investigative journalist Barry Levine is telling Dr. Oz that Epstein told fellow inmates conflicting stories of exactly what happened the night of July 23rd, 2019. Well, look, Epstein told lawyers that he was assaulted. And then all of a sudden it was, oh no, he, he, it was an attempted suicide. But none of the cameras worked. There was no evidence that's, that it's an attempted suicide. And you have him in a cell with Tartaglioni, who is obviously not above violence. This is a man who was not shy when it came to the world of violence, okay? There is no reason for Epstein to be in there with him. No logical explanation. How about putting him in with Bill Mercy? the jailhouse snitch guy that was running around and being Epstein's, you know, um, companion. Why not, why not pair them two up, throw them in a cell together, have Mercy act as a jailhouse snitch, and at the same time, keep an eye on Epstein. Instead, no, nah, let's, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll throw him there with Tartaglioni because, you know, that's a great idea. And Tartaglioni is obviously a very, 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 uh, you know, reliable individual. And you know he's not going to hurt Jeffrey Epstein. I mean, you know, come on. Putting Epstein in that cell is akin to cutting your leg with a deep gashing wound and throwing yourself into shark-infested waters. That was, go- that was always going to be the result, okay? I don't want to hear Epstein, w- he tried to strangle himself in the jail cell with Tartaglioni there. It makes no sense, folks. It really makes zero sense. At 1.27 a.m. that morning, Epstein was found semi-conscious in his cell with injuries to his neck. The convicted felon told his lawyers that he had been assaulted by his cellmate, suspected murderer Nicholas Tartaglioni. So Epstein told his lawyers that he was assaulted by Tartaglioni. Why would he make that up? Why would he say he was assaulted if he wasn't? So he doesn't get on suicide watch? Uh, that's his his ultimate goal is to commit suicide, I, I guess, right? I'm not ruling it out. I'm certainly not saying that, that that he didn't kill himself. What I'm saying is the shit does not add up. Way too many coincidences, and Occam's Razor says that this shit is off kilter. Something is not right here. And the fact that he was found unresponsive or semi-unresponsive in the cell and then related to his lawyers that he was attacked by Tartaglioni, I don't understand how the jail can't take that seriously, right? Don't they, you know, wouldn't they investigate something like that? Then again, they probably don't want, they didn't want any kind of uh, coverage on the fact that they put Epstein, one of the most prolific inmates in the prison system in with Tartaglioni. What if you put El Chapo in with somebody like uh, Tartaglioni? Of course you wouldn't. Would you put John Gotti in with somebody like Tartaglioni? Of course you wouldn't. Do they put Keith Rainieri in with somebody like Tartaglioni? Do they put Bill uh, Cosby in with somebody like Tartaglioni or Rainieri? Of course they didn't. So why in the hell would they put Jeffrey Epstein in with Tartaglioni? Now, tomorrow, I mean, later on today, what we're going to do is I'm going to read another article and we're going to we're going to get to know Tartaglioni a little bit better. And then you folks make up your own minds what you what you think makes sense, obviously. But for me, there's just no way in hell I'm biting on the narrative that it was just, you know, circumstance that Epstein's in that cell with Tartaglioni. And then he ends up being, quote unquote, almost suicided by himself. Tartaglioni was questioned by prison officials and denied any involvement in harming Epstein. An internal investigation later cleared the prisoner of any connection with the event. How could they do that? 
How is that possible if they didn't have the tapes? If the tapes weren't available for anyone to see, how can you clear him? What is it, his, his word against Epstein's? Or is it that you don't want the blowback on you? You don't want the, the media going crazy and wondering why Epstein was assaulted or why Epstein was even in this jail cell in the first place. That's the real motivation with the prison system. It's never about coming clean and being transparent, you know, like they work for us. It's always about hiding things and obfuscating and making sure the general public isn't aware of their bullshit. Well, guess what? You guys made a big mistake. Locking everybody in their homes and giving everybody all this time to ruminate was a huge mistake. And the powers that be are going to feel the repercussions. Because people have had enough. People are asking questions now. And I know... Most of you out there are not buying this narrative. What did these two inmates that you spoke to in the companion program tell you about this July 23rd suicide attempt, which we know was real? Dr. Oz asked Levine. Levine replied, yes. What's interesting about that is that Jeffrey Epstein gave two completely different versions of what happened that night. Initially, he told one of the men he made a strangling type of motion around his neck. So... Dr. Oz says, an attempt which we know was real? No, we don't know it was real, Dr. Oz. You're another another one of these Johnny-come-latelys. A guy that has a little bit of reach, has a couple people on his show, and all of a sudden he's an expert? Sorry, pal, not buying that either. We don't know it was real. We don't know anything. We have no evidence. Can you? Can anyone point to conclusive evidence telling us what went on that night in that, in that cell? Besides Tartaglioni... There's nobody that can tell us that one way or the other. So it's up to speculation. And for me and where I'm sitting and for my money, oh yeah, guys like Tartaglioni, they like to get it in. They're going to make someone like Jeffrey Epstein taste that smoke. Dr. Oz is then seen showing a ringing motion with his hands. With his hands like this? With his hands, that's correct. We have both of these men on the record in the book. The gentleman said, were you in fact strangled? And he nodded. Well, it's not just the two inmates. What about the most important part here, in my opinion, is what he told his lawyers, that he was assaulted by Tartaglioni. Why doesn't that carry any weight? And why are we only relying on what the two felons have to say? Now, don't get me wrong. A lawyer is, this lawyer is no better than the felons here, right? Let's be real. The felons are probably better people in the long run than these lawyers are. But for credibility purposes, we have a lawyer and an inmate who Epstein said that he was assaulted by Tartaglioni and left semi-unconscious. And then for one other inmate, he said something different. He told the second gentleman when he, when he was asked about the incident with the inmate, he said, I don't know what happened. I was asleep. I woke up. And the next thing I knew, I was on the floor. So we have two conflicting statements by Jeffrey Epstein to these two inmates. So for me, again, I'm pretty convinced at this point that Tartaglioni most certainly assaulted Jeffrey Epstein. How it stopped that first time, I don't know. Was it to send a message to Epstein? Was Tartaglioni in there to send a message? Tartaglioni's from Westchester. Westchester is a suburb of New York, right up the block. I mean, 40 minutes or so north of New York City. In fact, I'm from Westchester. So there's a lot going on here, folks. And I'm not willing to just, you know, discard the whole entire storyline of Tartaglioni and Epstein as something that has been open and shut. For me, there's a lot more there, and Tartaglioni has a lot more to tell when it comes to this story. Will he ever? I highly doubt it. Why would he at this point? I mean, he's facing these murder charges. I'm sure that when he gets selled up with his celly when he hits the main line, he'll be telling all about how he assaulted Jeffrey Epstein. After Epstein's death, Tartaglioni claimed that he was threatened by jail guards and told to stop talking after describing Epstein's death and conditions in the jail to the media. So again, how would he know? Tartaglioni doesn't know about Epstein's death. He wasn't there. He was moved out of the cell for some reason, and nobody else was moved in. Again, why wasn't Mr. Mercy moved in? The prison snitch that was supposedly keeping Epstein company. Perfect companion for Jeffrey Epstein. Perfect cellmate for Jeffrey Epstein. Not Nicholas Tartaglioni. 
You put Tartaglioni in with another hardened criminal, another murder suspect, somebody who's going to be in prison the rest of their lives for a violent crime. Jeffrey Epstein? Not so much, at least not till after the trial. After the trial and after he faces justice? Oh, I don't care. They could have mainlined him that day. The day he was done and he was sentenced, I would have been totally fine with him being put in general population. And if the inmates would have done their business, hey, that's just the way it goes in there. There's a different law in those jails and in those prisons. And somebody like Jeffrey Epstein stands no chance. So if he killed himself or if he was killed in that jail cell, it doesn't matter. He got the easy way out. Because if he would have had to face the rest of his life in prison, he would have been looking at one of the most torturous experiences one could possibly imagine for somebody like him. It's a good thing that Ghislaine Maxwell is going to get a taste. Surprisingly, the video footage taken from outside Epstein's jail cell on the night of his first apparent suicide attempt was permanently deleted. MCC officials mistakenly saved video from a different floor of the federal detention facility, prosecutors said in a court filing. So again, how is that even possible? Yeah, that, it's just, it, it's not likely, okay? These, these jails and prisons are shit shows, but come on. It, it, who is buying that nonsense? And the fact that the evidence wasn't preserved? Isn't there a chain of custody? And all of the people who were involved should be arrested or fired and face trial? Where did the tape go? Why wasn't it preserved? Who deleted it? Whose job was that? What is their relation to all of this? Do they know anyone who's tied to Jeffrey Epstein? These are questions that the investigators should be asking, and the legacy media, but they're not. So we'll continue to ask them here, and then eventually... You know, the legacy media will piggyback off of what, of, what us independent contract, uh, content creators are doing, and they'll start reporting it months later. The MCC inadvertently preserved video from the wrong tier within the MCC. And as a result, video from outside the defendant's cell on July 22nd, 23rd, 2019 no longer exists. Yeah, okay, I'm sure that that's what occurred. I'm sure that the video was just wasn't preserved. It wasn't done on purpose. Nah, no way. It would take the most epic amount of F-ups all in a row to happen all at the same time and to line up for this to take place. There is no end here, okay? There's no closing this narrative yet. We still need to know what happened in that jail cell, and nobody seems to be asking that question. Nobody seems to care. Well, I do, and I want to know what in the hell Jeffrey Epstein was doing in a jail cell with Nicholas Tartaglioni. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. And to everybody who has donated to the podcast, thank you very much. All right, folks, I'll be back later on with the Daily Drop. Enjoy your day. Name the cannabis connoisseur's pick. The Firefly 2 Plus delivers an unmatched cannabis experience. Created by former Apple designers and built using the same aluminum alloy bodies as NASA. The Firefly was designed with no expense spared. You deserve the best cannabis experience. And this is it. Get $25 off your Firefly 2 Plus order with the code PODCAST25 at thefirefly.com. That's code PODCAST25 at thefirefly.com. Welcome home to Click. Hundreds of data analytics leaders are coming home to Click to gain insights from data. Why? Well, it's simple. Better performance, greater usability, and a lower total cost of ownership. Plus, with Click, you can accelerate business value from data on Click's cloud or any cloud. Don't just take our word for it. It's what data analytics leaders are saying. Visit click.com slash welcome home to hear why hundreds of leaders in data analytics have come home to Click. That's click, Q-L-I-K dot com slash welcome home. Um...